black bears took to their dens in December and spent most of the winter asleep. A mother and her new family are making their first appearance. Three mischievous cubs were born in the safety of her den. Her fat reserves give a lifeline through the freeze. The next two months will be particularly dangerous. It's the time when most newborn cubs die. Big males are nearby. Some kill small cubs so they can mate with the mother and sometimes eat the newborns. But normally, 85% of a bear's diet is plants. Like the mother, he's gone for months without feeding and is ravenous. He's not the only one. Unlike bears, raccoons don't hibernate. They continue to make a living from the forest. They're after whatever they can find. The name raccoon comes from the native Indians that once owned these lands. Animals were described by their characteristics. They call these aracun, which means scratches with hands. Their dexterous four paws are especially sensitive, so even when they can't see prey, they can still find it by touch. Some people believe they wash their food, but their nimble fingers are actually just searching for hidden prey. Raccoons will eat just about anything, but their favorite food is crayfish. Up to a third of their diet can be made up of these tasty, crunchy critters. When they've had their fill, they head off for the next dish. Nearby, elk bulls are growing new antlers. Velvety stumps will soon become fearsome weapons. For now, all thoughts are on food. Elk were once common in these mountains until they were hunted out. A few dozen were reintroduced in the last decade. Ear tags and radio collars keep track of their growing numbers. Along the edge of misty waterways, strange beings have been waiting for this moment. It's time for them to emerge. Hidden within the damp earth of the forest floor, are secretive creatures rarely seen. They breathe through their skin, which must be kept moist, so they spend most of their lives buried in the leaf litter. Salamanders. Many are brightly colored, a warning sign to potential predators. All are poisonous. One by one they emerge. It's one of the Appalachians' most mysterious events. Aroused by the drumming of raindrops, spotted salamanders crawl to breeding ponds. They court in a frenzy of nudging and rubbing. This is the only time this year that they'll mate. As the rain dies, the party breaks up and they all disperse. Not far away, a different, much longer wait is about to end. This is the night the woodlands will change. The forest floor begins to move. An extraordinary event has begun. Bug nymphs that have hidden beneath the soil for 17 years choose tonight 
to merge and complete their life cycle. And they do it all together by the millions. Cicadas. Wave after wave emerges, seeking higher ground. For 17 years, this tree fuels their development. Buried a foot underground, the nymphs suck the juices from the tree's roots. Now they leave the underworld for their final transformation. The nymphs split open to reveal ghostly white adults within. Their bodies are soft and vulnerable. The cover of darkness protects them from predatory eyes. But daylight will bring hordes of forest creatures eager to dine on this rare delicacy. Soft-bodied adults have nearly completed their transformation. White skeletons are hardening, becoming darker. The adults are almost ready for their final act. Climbing to the topmost branches, they begin their performance. The males are calling for a mate. Vibrating membranes create sound that is amplified in a hollow chamber. Only the males can call and the result is a deafening concerto created by over a million cicadas in a single acre. By reproducing only once every 17 years, no predator has synchronized its life cycle to specialize in eating just cicadas. It's an ingenious strategy, but that doesn't mean the arrival of millions of protein-rich insects will be ignored.